Hi everybody, it's Maker Monday. I am super excited as like I am every Maker Monday, but um, look at my background and that is um, my personal watercolor magic and I am such a student. Um, I got my Frida shirt on and you'll see why in just a moment because um, today's guest is Heather Hagee. And Heather is a art teacher, um, high school art teacher in St. Augustine, Florida. She is amazing and um, her students created this shirt. It is a fundraiser. We will talk about that another time because time is gonna go by really fast today. And so originally I promised everybody 30 minutes of demonstration, but we learned on our first um, Maker Monday that 30 minutes doesn't get us to the question answer part. So we're going to do 30 minutes of the demonstration and 30 minutes of a little bit of question answer stuff. And so if you are only prepared for the 30 minutes, that's okay. Log off, do what you need to do. Um, an hour after the video, you should get a email that will include the um, recorded session. And it will also include a PD certificate for the hour. So make sure to print that so that you get your PD certificate. But I'm gonna turn it over to Heather so that we get going because I'm super, she has so many good things and it just kept building. So these Maker Mondays are outstanding. Heather, thank you so much for um, being here. There's a handout for everybody. Um, in the handouts, click on that. It gives you all of Heather's information and all of today's fabulousness. So Heather, it's all yours and I'll try really hard not to interrupt, but I'm staying on because I'm all excited. Me too. Me too. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Heather Hagee. Um, only one small correction. I teach middle school. I, um, I have middle school students. I teach six, seven, and eight. And um, <laughs> hold on. Can you see me? Yeah. Let's show my screen. There. Okay. So um, I teach hold middle on. school. We can't see Heather. Don't share your screen, Heather, because um, we got gotcha. you. You got me? Is it working now? Yep. Okay. We can see uh, you perfectly. Okay. No, we uh, can't. I click on click on share your screen. I was confused because I could see you. Okay, it says audience. Is that working now? On the side, you should you should have your camera on, and when it says um, share screen, click says, that off. It says showing screen. Yeah, click don't show screen. This nice. is what distance learning is all about, and we oh, feel. I'm so sorry. I'm going to try a different. People can see a pause version of your screen. I'm going to click on my video and see what happens. Oh. Nope, you actually clicked off your video, so you want to click on the camera. Okay. And I'm so stop sorry. Showing screen. So it says share my webcam. No one can see you. Click to share your webcam. And then there's, and then also there should be one that says stop showing screen. Yes. Push so that. Stop showing your screen. Yes. You're perfect. Uh, I'm so sorry, everybody. Sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. I don't mean to waste you know what? There's so many different platforms these days, oh. Zoom and <laughs> FaceTime, and I get it. Yeah, um, okay. Um, okay, it's well, it's better than the one I do with the church folk. Whoa, not ripping on them, just saying, like, clearly they don't do this on a daily basis. Yeah. All right, so um, today I want to show you guys how to make a, a travel watercolor kit for yourself or for your students. The reason, um, Years ago at my first FAEA conference, I sat next to this woman, Diana, who had one of these. We were sitting, listening to a keynote speaker and uh, she had one of these. And this is like a little watercolor kit. And inside, mine has been used a lot. This is um, my little cup sheet that I made of the colors. 
but it's got all of these watercolors and this is like an aquarelle uh, it, little brush that holds that holds water in the reservoir and then has like a brush tip that you can screw on and use so you can paint anywhere you want so she like was sitting in this her little chair and painting i was like i got it what is that thing i need to have one so um i have this one and i bought it and then i also have like another one these are also things that nasco sells but this one has all kinds of sparkly paints in it and i've used used them like a lot this th some of them i've had for years and uh, I was teaching a class at my school. We had a once a week group of kids that came to see me and it was about 25 of them. And I was teaching a class called Taking Time Out. And it was about taking time, you know, off of our shiny screen to do something that's just for us. So we got a bunch of, um, I had a bunch of, I had a kit of sketch, like bulk watercolor sketchbooks that we put together for my students. And um, someone from a local toy shop, to, that wasn't selling some of their watercolor kits sent them to me. And so I had some watercolor tube watercolors. And what I did was I made, well, they all made these. And this is just like a little, I bought a little tin. I'm going to use a little mint tin today. Oh, some paint dripping out of it. But, um, and we're gonna make these. And how I did it was, um, just work out some paint down here. I'm gonna put my screen down now so I can show you guys all the products that I used to make it, okay? Perfect. All right. There? Looks, looks good. All right, sweet. All right, so um, what I do, I have, I have these paints here. So they're just watercolor, watercolors and tubes. And to make it the supplies you need are like a little box like this, I bought a box of, I think I got 40 of them for about 20, 25 bucks on Amazon. But if you have, you know, you like little mints, want to stay fresh all the time and you, you need to empty your box, you've got a cute little thing here. And um, there's lots of options, but this seems to be the easiest. This is um, gum and the gum that comes in like this so you pop all the gum out and then you have this which is like just a little reservoir for in here, for putting inside of here so all that you do um sometimes you have to cut it down a little bit to make sure that it fits inside and it's kind of a guessing game but um there's also like other options if you don't want to use gum you could also i've seen people use legos put them in upside down and they have like that negative space underneath so it's like a little well that you could glue inside or there's things like um you can also use sculpy clay and fill up your little tin and put holes in it and bake it i think at like 270 degrees for like 20 minutes and that secures it but this i feel is like super simple and really awesome so what happens is these i did last week in prep for our class is they they're now they're dry like they, they dry so you can use them and then use water to reactivate them and um the first time i did this with students and my i had i didn't have like 25 things of gum sitting around but I did have a bunch of buttons that each had like a little well. So we hot glued them into their, um, into their tin and they, uh, however many buttons they fit in, there was how many things of uh, paint they could put in there. So we just did it like that. But I used, for I had a kit of less paint than this and I made enough kits for 25 kids and they, it, when they ran out, they came back. I gave them more, um, but we we really. So made I'm going to quick interrupt really quick. So you made enough for 25 kids, and that didn't use up all the um, paint yeah. in the toy set. Yeah. Wow. Like, like, I mean, this stuff goes on, and if when you teach them how to use it, it really lasts like so long. I have painted probably hundreds of small paintings like little things like this with my 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 kit and it just seems to 
it just lasts forever. It's I love that. And I love the emphasis on if you teach them how to use it, because I have been playing along with you and I created my own. And um, now I just need somebody to teach me how to use it. But I, I'm just doing what I do. And so this is awesome. Um, but yeah, and I'm loving watching this because I'm learning so much more. Oh, this one's got a little oil sitting on top. Let me see here. Um, sometimes it's been sitting around for a while. It's got to kind of massage the oil back into the product. But um, there we go. And uh, let's see, we'll put a do to do, do a black. And uh, do, you, do you have 10 colors that you would recommend? Um, I made sure that I got the primary colors. And then I always want like a brown and a black and a white. And it's really just about preference, really. I mean, I, I didn't because, and it also depends on what your kids are going to be painting, you know? Like my kids, when they were, when I did it with my students, they were just doing like meditative practices. It might be like painting straight lines as close together and as skinny as possible and filling up a page. Or it could have been like um, just painting rainbows over and over again. It was really, so I let them choose whatever colors they liked. I let them do whatever they wanted. Um, for my advanced class that I did this with my eighth graders that I've had for three years in a row, which is Ian Caro's painting is the one that's on the uh, on the um, handout. He chose the colors he wanted because he had to make skin tones and do all of that. So um, it's really about the subject matter you're going to do. Like kind yep. of like you buy colored pencils when you buy specialized kits. There's ones for portraiture and there's ones for landscape. Or like maybe you're like me and you're just like, oh, that one has lots of sparkles. I think I'll get it. <laughs> you know, I also um, am cracking up because I, I never even thought to ask you this or do this, you know, as the NASCO representative. Um, what's the total cost of each kit? Yeah, that is a great question because she just said she made 25. And if you think the watercolors themselves are $25. Well, now that's a dollar per kit. The Altoid tin, I say Altoid because that's the mint tin. Yeah, the tin and, the, and the gum, um, you know, collect those for free. Um, and then certainly the cost of a brush. And you can do, you can go fancy. Hey, if you've got the budget or you've got people that want to, you know, you could set this up. You could set it up with the donors, choose or something, but if you want to set something up where people donate, or you just, you know, one of those lucky people with an unlimited budget. These things are super awesome. So it works like this. this yep, and there is, um, <clears throat> there's a really inexpensive version of that brush called um, Aqua Flow that really? Royal Brush makes. That um, oh, is, it's a really inexpensive version. The Sakura one is um, deluxe. Yeah, I, this thing I've had for five years though, and I've used yes. it a zillion times. Um, my my supplies have suffered the most when I when I originally I brought in my fancy kit to share with my students, and then I realized I didn't want to do that anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah, like these brushes are really cute, and you you know just push the water out of it, and then you've got like the little sponge inside your kit here to like wipe things off. But um, when I did it for my students, I bought bulk cheap brushes like this, and I just cut them, and I made them so they fit inside the tin. What did you cut them with? Um, like a I, saw? I might have used like my paper cutter at school, like the big mon the big monster one with the handle, or I don't. I've got lots of I somehow I've collected a lot of tools in my classroom, like. I don't know another teacher that has a crowbar, and I don't know why I need it, but I have one. <laughs> so I probably, I mean, it was really simple. I think I just used, I, I, I have like a lot of like exacto knives and things like that, like industrial cutters, and I might have used that to cut them. It's very simple. I mean, you can practically score it and break it. They're really, if it's just a little wood handled brush like this, it's pretty easy. But um. Let's see, I gotta look at my notes, make sure I tell you guys everything you needed to know. I know, and I'm probably derailing you, asking no. you questions during, but I'm just afraid that our the, there'll be more questions coming. So you can Ask say, 
back off the questions if you need me to. No, I'm great. I'm I'm super happy. So um, I wanted to show you like maybe how to use them a little bit. And because we have a limited amount of time, I didn't want to spend like a lot of time doing a lot of drawing. So I'm just going to just show you some things that I did and tell you about the product that I used to do it. Um, these I love. It's their watercolor postcards. And it's, um, you get a pack of 50. It's made by Jack Richardson. It's 135 pound paper and um, it's all set up. It's postcard weight. You just get your little, I think it's a 20, maybe it's 37 cents these days. Your 37 cent stamp. You know, there's your place where you put their address. There's where you put your message and you can do a painting. Um, putting watercolors in the mail can feel a little vulnerable because it's going in the mail. And I don't know about where you guys are everywhere, but it's been raining like crazy. So some of my postcards have gotten a little, they get a little more character on their trip ac um, across the state or across the United States, depending on who I'm sending to. But- um, Do you think if you Mod Podged over it, it would work? I don't know if Mod Podge will reactivate the watercolors because it's when it gets wet that they get reactivated. But for me, it's just or part of the- spray? Maybe, I don't know. I just kind of accept it and it's kind of fun. Like, I've sent over 100 postcards during the COVID time. I just like paint something and then I'm just let go of it and give it away, which has been super fun. So um, I like the postcards. Um, like uh, there's an, an artist online, Ashley Longshore. She works out of uh, New Orleans and she's hysterical. And she did a port, she called it a self portrait and it was a bunch of bananas because I think during this time we're all feeling kind of crazy. <laughs> so, um, those of you, <laughs> those of you that go to FAEA several years ago, there was like a mango workshop, like how to paint your mango or something. And my sister Gretchen sent me hers. She just turned it into a postcard, which has been fun. I do a lot of kind of silly portraits. This is one that I did with watercolors and I think just a pen of Julia Child, the painting in front of her with her in front of all the chickens, which kind of, I don't know, the <laughs> photograph of her that I just love. But, um, I wanted to show you some techniques for using your watercolors and um, kind of like take some of the fear of like thinking that you have to do all this hyper realistic work out of it. So today before we started, I just painted a little pear here. I pulled up a pear on my phone. Uh, you might not be able to see it, but I just wrote pear and pulled up the image. And when it comes to painting things, it's always good to like start with watercolors to start with your lightest color first. So I did this whole thing in yellow, and then I went back and picked up, let's see, picked up some of the more like my brown, brownish yellow, dark yellow here. Can you see? And what you do is you don't really work directly out of the watercolors. Use this or like a ceramic plate is a great thing to use as a palette. Something white's really a nice color to have for your background for mixing colors. But you just take a little bit of this pigment and you swirl some water in it and it's really like it can it really works it's beautiful and you know you can do like a wet on wet technique or you can make it a little darker but the you don't want to use a whole lot of paint if you use the watercolors straight out of here and just kind of smear them on the paper and this is the hardest thing to teach your students you're going to have a sticky painting when it's done the stuff's going to be sticky it's going to be like I tell them it's gonna be covered in cat hair. Um, <laughs> whatever tactics you like to use might be more gentle than mine. But um, it's, uh, you just kind of mix them on here and just add your color. And if it doesn't, I always tell my kids also like, okay, you're doing a still life or you're drawing a painting, you're drawing a flower. Like at the beginning of this, I painted a ton of flowers because we would go for all these massive long walks because we were fighting off the, you know, the boredom. and um, my son would pick a wildflower, we'd take it home, I'd put it in a little jar and I'd paint it and then I'd paint it a bunch of times and send it out. So um, this is something just like that. And then I would probably go back with, you could use watercolor pencils or you could go in with a pen. Sometimes I just use like a ballpoint, something super easy. So like if we had another time when we were sending our supplies home with kids, cause maybe during Christmas break, there's like a, you know, a little pop-up of sickness and we all need to stay home. If they have this and a brush, 
they, I guarantee they have something like this at home. And if they don't, they have a pencil or they have something. They have crayons, they have markers, you know, they have all kinds of stuff. So um, this one I just took for um, the sake of just making something kind of fast. I just did like a little um, contour line drawing of Frida here. And um, I mixed some colors to make like a skin tone. Might, and might be a little dark here, but that's okay. And um, with watercolors, I don't know, like I tend to exercise a lot of forgiveness with myself. I'm just like, okay, well, it's, you know, it's a painting. I mean, and when you're doing something small like this, you also have the opportunity to have a lot of forgiveness for yourself because you're not, I get afraid that I'm going to, I'm going to waste something that I, uh, my art supplies are very precious to me. And I get nervous that um, I'm going to make something that I can't give to anybody or I don't want to look at myself. So I'm going to have to throw it away. And when it's only something that costs a couple of pennies, it's not a big deal. You know, like you can just kind of enjoy it and do your thing. It's not like this isn't like, some massive commitment you know you're not painting a mural in your town square for every you know you got to stamp your name on you're just doing a little something and it's kind of fun i give away most of my art because it feels I love that. <laughs> yeah it just it feels really good and um i live in a very small space and i have two sons and a husband and um it's been you know um, kind of a challenge. So I just kind of enjoy it and I'm painting upside down. I don't know if that's going to affect what I've got going on here today or not, but um, like if you're mixing colors, you just do it just like that in the palette. Um, I really like that. And um, you can just kind of, you know, have some fun with it. And I think if you just have your students find a way that they're comfortable like i really like doing a drawing and then kind of filling it up and then going going in with my lightest color going back with darks but um make it look easy you're killing me this is awesome so, and i've got this little tiny brush it's almost it's a lot like coloring it's it's like super fun and we're gonna give frida she's sassy we're gonna give her she's got kind of oh there perfect place to show you how i make take care of a mistake like you can really lift up a lot like that like how my color just, just a napkin or a paper yeah. towel or if it's kind of more serious you can take a wet brush and it kind of see how it just kind of went away wow that's awesome if you What's do it the tiny little tin in between the two like altoid tins oh this one i can't seem to get it open they're Wonder Woman mints, but I have seen cut. I have seen people make kits and things this teeny tiny. So yeah, it, those are harder to get open. They have these weird little like pleats along the side, and yeah, like I'm, I, if I do it, the mints are going to explode everywhere. But I'm going <laughs> to, and you don't really absolutely have to have like a container to put all the paint in. But right. I, I think it's, I've seen people do it without it, but I think it's better. I prefer having it, to be honest. Well, I, and quite honestly, um, somebody else said that they were concerned that if you made them at school, they wouldn't dry in time for kids to take them home. Mine <laughs> haven't dried because I took my little, um, mine were Listerine, blister pack, which, whoa, that's like straight Listerine dried up, wow. <laughs> um, anyways, and um, I, I cut it down to six and uh -huh. so, it was gonna be a little bit loose in my Altoid tin, and I didn't think of the genius that um, put put a glue dot on the bottom. Thank you for that, by the way. That was oh, yeah, um, super smart. I love that idea, because you're right, hot glue would melt the plastic, but a glue dot would be perfect. Um, and so I've been putting mine in a sandwich bag and then shoving it in the Altoid tin and closing it up, and it hasn't spilled all the way around. No, <clears> and <throat> mine, um, I, I made it and then I put it aside and it was drying a day. They dry super fast. And if they're not dry when they go home with the kids, it's okay. Um, it's totally okay. If it doesn't, it'll dry over time. It's not like it's gonna like really spill out. And I mean, this, I mean, they're, that's not moving or getting any. 
So uh, it's, uh, you know, I'm trying to get my skin color back here. I kind of lost it. Uh, that's my little dog in the background. My very little dog cafe, my chihuahua, my 16 year old dog. And uh, which water do you need to, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt the dog thing. You can clearly tell that I'm not a pet owner or I would have been intent on the pet listening. So I apologize. All of a sudden I saw a question and it made me wonder too. Seriously, how selfish is that? Um, how much water gets you the right consistency? Um, I make just like a puddle. I mean, it's like, it's my paint's like water when I paint with it. It's like water. Like there's, it's, this is, I mean, it's gonna flow around when I do it right here. And it, your paint's gonna, last forever because of it. Um, Heather, um, let me give credit where it's credit's due here. Pam says, push the lid down on Wonder Woman and you get the, um, and it, it, no, and it pops up. Like if you push hard on the middle. I've had this thing for years. I've never opened it. It's, <laughs> I'm gonna have right. to go. I'm going to the police. I'm going to the fire department and getting the jaws of life to get this guy open. I don't know what's going on here, but that um, is hilarious. I do know those kind that it you push and then it sort of releases the sides. Ah, I'll I'll, I'll wrestle with this thing after we do this. Today. Absolutely. But um, I don't know. I think um, I think painting with watercolors. Everybody, I don't know it doesn't all have to like, you know, look like it belongs on a greeting card or something. It's just for you. Like it's, it's, I, I tell everybody, like I tell my dad who has like, has stick figures are like, as far as he would ever be going in the art world. And, and I was like, everybody should paint, like everybody should do it. It feels really good. It's good for you. Um, I feel like right now is a time when people need to find like that state of flow so badly. You know, like where you kind of yes. lose yourself in something besides like the media and everything else. So I don't know. That, that's just me. And uh, but I think uh, I don't know. The this is a great way for your students to get to make something, and it can be like super fun. I'm breaking my own rules right now. Oh, I forgot. Her ears aren't painted. Heather, do you remember, are the J, if, are the JRC, that is Jack Richardson and Company, are the, um, are those postcards um, 80 pound, 90 pound? 135. They're 135. 135. Thank you. And they're um, awesome. They're really, I mean, like, I, I think love them. And NASCO has a version um, of 50 um cards for about six bucks i think ours are like an 80 pound um as well um they're they're lighter i mean but they i'm sure they would work some of my i mean anything that you can use um watercolors on it's not as limiting it as people think like as long as it's not copy paper you can pretty much use watercolors on it you know like you can use your watercolors which is you know Nice. So, my little puppy. So, um, hilarious. I keep kind of panicking because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, where's that coming from? And then I remember it's the puppy. So loud. He's been for a walk. He's got a full food bowl. He's just, he's, he's, he just, he just wants attention. Um, he knows that you're busy. Who was the artist who did the banana thing? Oh, Ashley Longshore. She is hysterical. She can, um, she's definitely not some, she um, uses a little more adult language than you'd want to expose your students to, but her art is so much fun. Like she really, and she's prolific. Like she just paints so, so much. And her messages of like positivity, like are, she's like, she really, she embraces that like everybody should paint. Everybody's beautiful. You're, you're fine. Just like you are. Like, she's just so, she's yeah. always musicians in her studio and she's got, so many things going on and she just really loves um she's very pop culture she's all about the gucci she's uh <laughs> she's a crack up so i uh i follow her on instagram 
just because uh, she makes me feel really good. I mean, I guess that's a good enough reason, right? So, uh, yeah. And um, so also like sometimes with paintings, like if it's something like this, where it's just kind of, you know, um, I don't like that color. Something like uh, that doesn't have a lot of texture to it or anything. Like I like to, I go, I'm, as you can probably tell, I like to make things in a very kind of loose way, but like I'll add dimension to something by, you know, just kind of um, adding some texture and things with a colored pencil. And I like to stay nice and loose because that's kind of just my style. But um, and it'll look like I've got just an image like pulled up on my phone of a pair. But uh, it's fun. And it's a way to just kind of like add some contrast to your work because sometimes with um, watercolors, it can start to feel kind of flat, you know, but if you add, get like some color in there and some texture and maybe show where those lines are and those contours, it can just be like a nice way to make something a little more interesting to look at. And that's really more my goal than making things like really realistic, I guess. But um, have, you ever, have you ever used gouache? I just got some and it's, I got a gel, I got jelly gouache, which is, can be reactivated with water. And I think I could use it with this. I got a huge pack. They're little cups about this big. And I think I got 48 of them and it was 40 bucks and it comes in like a suitcase. And I think I might have it. So it's this big. It's humongous. And it oh comes. Goodness. It's called, it's made by Adore. I think it's a Japanese company. But the gouache comes in little cups like this. And it's like a, it looks like acrylic, but it's water based. So when it dries, it reactivates. And I think you could do the same thing. Like Take this a has, picture of that and send it to me because that's how we get new ideas for products is straight from you guys. Um, sure. And then of course, you know, manufacturers that want to sell to us. But when we know that a teacher loves something, that's how that's how we add it to the catalog. So your voice oh. matters. Um, but um, back to the other question though, have you ever put them in the little um, Altoid tins? No, but I use them. Um, I used it on a like a ceramic saucer. I paint on all of my plates at home. It makes my husband insane. But I'm like, it washes off. It's fine. But um, I used it on a saucer and I left it there. And the next, I used it for days. Like it would dry. And then I could go back in with water and reactivate it. Just like you could, if you put this stuff on a plate, it would be fine. You know, it's just not something I can put in my purse. So I think you could do it. I, if it's water-based gouache that gets, there's acrylic gouache and water gouache, I think. And um, what I have reactivates and you could definitely do it with this for sure. Um, I think that's, I, I feel I, I've gone over time, I'm sorry. Um, no, you're doing, you're doing fine. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the time and you know, we love watching you so, if you have more to show us, you can keep it going because I can throw some questions out. But if you, you know, you can always hold stuff up as well. If you're done demoing, we'd love to see your face and we've got questions. Yeah, I think I'm done. I think I, I, I have my cheat sheet and I, I've got everything on there that I've done. So, hi everybody. I won't touch any buttons about the camera. <laughs> you don't have to touch anything at all and we will see your face and that will be fabulous there um, i think we're good there we go thanks chris so here is um it, I don't, watercolors typically do not have oil in them is that correct yes i don't know what that is it's just like the the agent that like the the binding agent or something yes. came up well, and I was cracking up because as you were talking about using water with you, with yours, yeah, I was taking it right out. I'm so classic, not mixing it with water. I mixed it with water when 
I wanted to, but a lot of it, I was taking it right out, but you say that makes it a little sticky. So learn something. Yes. I've had kids use so much that it stays sticky. I mean, you really have to go in with gusto <laughs> to make that happen, but it's happened in my classroom. Um, but I think uh, that the, um, just if you teach them to make like the little puddle and the palette, you, these things will just last forever. Yeah, I now yeah, I'm totally realizing that too, which is great. And the colors are gorgeous. Hey, you know what uh, you told me about that we didn't share is talk about how you can create another really inexpensive palette, um, oh. kind of like this. Isn't this kind of cute? I made my wow. own. Um, my like own. It looks like a pan watercolor set. Yeah, and um, tell them what I used. I totally stole it from you. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So um, I went to a workshop a couple days ago and we all got like a 24 pack of these General's pencils. Um, the woman swears that these are like the best best, even though they don't have the fancy packaging of some of the other ones, that this is like where it's at. And um, can you still see me? I'm getting like a... Yep, you're perfect. Okay. Um, cause I've got like a thing up on my, but, um, these are like super great. And what we did was, uh, she, she does this with her students and has them do something like this. So this is watercolor paper here. And I took like the same color and repeatedly just, you know, did like three passes of coloring kind of hard of each color and did it like this. And you can let's see what I've got here. Like you can pick the color up from here and paint with it. Like, oops, sorry. But you can like, it's it's like a watercolor palette on the go that you can use. Like, and it's just watercolor pencil that's been colored onto the paper and you can bring it with you. She did on a really large scale and did several squares of each color and then did like a presentation where she painted something with it. And um, also a great way to, because watercolor pencils are really expensive, but um, they're so effective. But this way, the kids aren't, you know, grinding them into oblivion or accidentally putting them in their own pencil case, or you know, you're not finding them on the floor. They made their palette like this, and then they have all the pigments that they want, and you can even mix it. You can mix it off to the side, or she often just got some on a brush and then ran it through another one of the squares, like on her palette. But um, it it's effective and um, I don't think the colors are as vibrant as using something like this, but if you needed to send your kids home with art supplies, or if you have a kid who's like, hey, I'm going to be out for two weeks because, you know, we're going, I don't know, does anyone go anywhere anymore? But like if they're doing something and they, the child's not going to be in school, you could provide them with something like this and they could still participate. They could still make art and you're not sending home your valuable supplies home with the student, you know, like. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're young. They You can't expect them to be like, oh, this pencil's really, really important and this is heavy. I'm going to make sure I bring it back to her in two weeks. No. And But if they lose this piece of paper, who cares? You know, it's just a piece of paper with some pigment on it. So um, I thought oh, that... Absolutely. And it does work because I copied you uh -huh. and created um, my own little version. I used... Um, I was still on the whole Faber-Castell thing. I used the gold... I used the gold faber um, aqua, um, mm -hmm. so it was the same situation where I just took the um, I just took the watercolor pencils and yeah. I, I I like really did it hard. Is that called burnishing, where you really um, lay it down hard? I don't know. I, I might sure. have made that word up myself. <laughs> um, and then, but seriously, this is like virtually copy paper um just inexpensive paper and it it works perfect i'm going to go and do a little of the red i think red will show up a little bit nicer and i'm just dipping it on there with the water yeah um and so yeah way cool um you could make tons of these and that could be just like a weekend project yeah, like the, or the kids could all do it, but I love like your template, how it looks like a watercolor pan. I think that's, 
makes it. I felt very, I felt very genius um, on that. But I let me go on a car trip. I'm like, he could do, I would trust, I, I'm, I'm pretty fast and loose with my um, art supplies in my own home with my children. I, I have a six year old and I'd let Wyatt do that. I'd, let, I'd, I'd probably let Wyatt, if I gave him my Aquarell pen, I'd probably let him do it in the car. One of the questions that we had is, can you re-review how she created the paint in the tin to be hardened? Like, how long does it take for the koi stuff to harden? A day. For real? Oh. I, I keep putting mine in a plastic sandwich bag so it doesn't harden. Um, oh, you, you know, want it to harden. It's totally fine. It, does, yeah. it hardens and it's done in a day. It's well, totally yeah, and you're certainly not going to waste it as much as I do um, oh, if you do oh, that. So, yeah, thank you, Lori. Great question. Um, yeah. Suggestion for carrying water um, besides Aquarelle or Aquaflow? I brought a yeah, bottle. water bottle or like a little tiny mason jar or um, uh, if you uh, like don't want to put a mason jar in your purse or whatever like I get that but um any kind of small container that you can get your hands on or you could also do like a sponge if you wanted something that like you could like a sponge in a plastic bag could, could work for you like a little kitchen sponge or part of a little kitchen sponge you don't need a ton a ton of water and uh yeah I try to um I I brought water in like a water some people do like a little lid like the lid from the top of think of um the the plastic lid that comes on the spray oil that you, you know like you spray on your pans the non-stick oil yeah you know, like that little cup yep something you could throw in it oh perfect perfect there everything in a little tiny box or you can put it in a little pencil bag they make well and if you get a, if you get um you know any kind of you know there's tins all over the place you know what i mean uh, like christmas time like they have tins like this out all the time um and you know every rummage sale in the world and every goodwill in the world probably has these um that top can also um depending on the lid this one's deep enough that it could have some water in it as well um another question was um what materials would you use to make the top into like a, um, like a white palette? Um, laminate paper, maybe? They actually make some um, paper palettes. If you, if, you, if you bought the paper palettes and just cut out a little rectangle and stuck it in there, that would work every time. You could give mm -hmm. each child um, or student one sheet of that, and they could make several that they could just reuse. Um, yeah. That would definitely work as well. Um, I'm not an art teacher though, so I should probably let the expert. Uh, you could also like spray paint the inside of the cans. You know, you could spray paint the inside of the tins with like a white spray paint. Like you could do that. Or I bet if you could, I bet you could probably use a, acrylic paint if you wanted to. But I love your idea, Chris, because I have like a pad of that paper and to just put a bunch of those little guys right inside there. I tend to just work straight on the metal. Um, or yeah, like in the in the kits that you buy they're white plastic or you could even take like the plastic lid let's say your sour cream container you know cut trace the shape of and insert that you know trace the shape of the inside of your tin on a flat piece of like food grade plastic and cut it out and stick it in there and that's something that oh you yeah can, um you know? i'm loving this because we've we actually talked ahead of time and Yes, we did kind of plan the whole Frida shirt thing. I said, I'm going to for sure wear my Frida shirt. And she said, okay, I'll wear mine too. Um, and there's nothing cooler than like feeling like you're cool in an art teacher's eyes. Like every time I buy something or do something, I'm like, oh my gosh, I think art teachers would love these glasses. I think art okay. teachers would love this skirt. Um, we, we so yes. Yeah. yeah. So we definitely planned it, um, but I also just wanted to share too that this is screen printing done by um, students, and then Heather took it to the Florida Art Ed Association and sold them. I think you also sold them at nationals because, quite mm -hmm. honestly, I'm pretty sure I have like four of them, and I just rotate them because I love them so much. I'm the same. Um, yeah. And yeah, I do. And people dig them. Like people are like, "Where did you get that?" 
Um, so it's a great little fundraiser as well. And kids, I think, yeah, really felt I think good about our, it. I think with our club after school, I've, I'm trying to find a way to do screen printing with a class of 40, but I'm, um, I haven't wrapped my head around that yet, but doing it with a club was great. Um, yeah. I did it with a club that I saw once a week during the school day. And I've also done it with an after school club that I saw twice a week, but we had a, um, a place to burn the screens in the school and all kinds of supplies that got donated from the local high school. And all we really had to do was buy the t-shirts and a few new screens and we were, we were in business and it raised a nice amount of money. Yeah, that's, that's the fantastic part about that. Um, you do suggest only one brush and mine yeah. is clear. So that's a bad one to hold up, but you suggest only one brush. Um, I mean, tip, right. You don't, you don't give them a brush for each color. They no, just keep. No. I, I have brushes like, this is like one of my go-to brushes. And for some people, it might feel kind of big for doing watercolors. It's a size 12, but it's round and it's got a really nice fine tip on it. So I can get like really small marks. But typically I like, oh gosh, this poor guy. Here's another Richardson product. He's been with me for a long time. This guy's seen a lot of action. He's been to the, war, the, the art wars, it looks like. But this is a number six. And a number six, I tend to find that if it's kind of, this one's not as pretty as it used to be. But um, if it comes to a nice point, and then you can also like kind of like push it down and get like a greater volume. And also because when you're painting outside, you're probably not painting huge. Or if you're traveling, like this is this isn't a kit for painting, you know, a 24 by 30 inch piece of watercolor paper. You're gonna if you're you know on the go. I don't know. For me, like small is where it's at with watercolors because you can you can do it on your lap. You can stick a book on your lap or you can carry a clipboard along with you or, yeah. you know, like it's, a, it, it's all about like, I like to make it as easy as possible. So I'll make more art, you know, if it's what, much um, what was the, um, you used general pencils, watercolor, mm -hmm. pencils, right? That yeah. was the brand that you used. Um, there, I will tell you, there is a wide variety. This one is Faber-Castell, but just about everybody that makes a colored pencil makes a watercolor colored pencil. And so um, I think typically we've picked out the ones that have been purchased the most um, mm -hmm. as, you know, that work for teachers and carry that, that group of brands. But if you um, just search by um, watercolor colored pencils, the group comes up, but Heather, you use general pencils, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the workshop uh, provided them for us. So, um, and uh, she was uh, a rep for general, but she did some, she did great stuff. She took, there was some time she would take like the edge of a pencil with an emery board over her work to make like little dots and then like add a tiny bit of water to create some texture. She, she had some really fun techniques, at, but like for me, this was kind of the winner, you know, because it yeah, uh, yeah, that one that's a that's an excellent hack. Um, Kathy Hansen is probably the one who did that. Yes, yes, um, it was. Yeah, yes, yeah. sir. Kathy Hansen is an amazing um artist. Yes. Um, she does a lot with watercolor. Um, she's obviously fantastic at drawing and um works very much with general pencil to do lots and lots of workshops for them. She's fantastic. Um, tell everybody the um, name of that gouache kit. Oh, everyone's uh, really interested in that as well. Adore, A-D-O-R-E. Perfect, thank you. We're looking into that too. Sarah Long is our um, solution director for the art category. And so um, that's how we learn. Um, you oh, tell us we... Yeah, like I, I, I think gouache is fun because it's op it's more opaque than watercolors. That's like seems that's like the big difference that and um but that you can reactivate it and you don't have to it's not doesn't have I feel like with acrylic, like once it's out of the bottle, it's done with my students. And I, I we use it of course, but um I think if I can get them excited about watercolors and sometimes I've struggled with getting like really nice supplies. And that's like when usually when I want something that's kind of fancy, I don't go for my own budget. I'll try to find a grant, you know, somebody that wants to give me money 
great idea. And I'll use it with my like my students that like a, a special class and everybody has that special class. Like it might be sixth graders, it might be fourth graders, but you, <laughs> it's like this great group of kids that you're like, these guys care and they're really a great group and we I can experiment with them. But I have found that when I buy nicer products, like when I first started, when I got my first classroom as a teacher, um, the teacher that had worked the year before had quit and they hired two new art teachers. And we had $1,000 worth of supplies for a year for um, approximately 400 students. And we had all, <laughs> it was a crazy year. I painted on a lot of like weird things, but, um, but I, and we made it work, but I started realizing that buying the cheapest materials isn't always the best way to go. Like when you buy quality right. things last longer, as long as you explain to your students, like how to use it. Yeah, you're a hundred percent right because this is, um, one of our least expensive watercolor sets and it's been used hard it is part of um the recent kit that we put together during the distance learning situation that happened so fast oh, yes, so yes. For, i think it's like 650 it was um a pencil a sharpener um an eraser um eight crayons um and watercolors and honestly, I took that and created a bunch of art that came off of our lesson plans and it worked. Here's the thing is it's not, it didn't work because I'm a great artist because I'm not like, you know, thank goodness the scene's a little bit blurred behind there. It'd be real embarrassing, but um, it worked because the lesson plan worked. And so, because art teachers teach us and yep, it's a, it, in this one, the brush is way less than perfect. It's one of those, you know, gnarly um, nylon black tip brush, but it does work. And so, you know, you hate to say, don't do it because this is so cheap. But if you, if your school budget is one that you can only afford this, your teaching is still going to be what outweighs this and this will get color on the paper then you're going to go up to something like praying or crayola where the brush gets a little bit better nasco has a private label um it's always bad when you can't get the brush out nasco has a private label where we have a little bit of a nicer brush in there too and it does make the experience better but again the technique and the ability comes from the art teacher i um i've been the art teacher's biggest fan forever but now more than ever because i realize it's what you teach me that makes me a good artist not the product the yeah, product can, though helps the, the color and oh, so those then you go up to something like the faber castell connector set um and i and i'm giggling because i'm prom i promise i'm not like trying to be too salesy here it's just then the quality becomes better and the the brightness and um the pigment and then you do something like the koi, um, but now you've just taught us how to create it so that this seriously comes down to like maybe $2 a set, $3 a set. Wow, that's well, awesome. Yeah, well also the fact that like, if you can make one for students to have on their own, like we're, I mean, the art teachers I talk about, we talk to, we're trying to figure out how we're going to, if, is the protocol gonna be that we, everyone uses only their own things that we don't because, you know, everybody shares everything in the art room. You know, yeah. I have 200 kids a day come through my class and if we're all painting, we're all sharing the same paintbrushes, you know, and, um, but if they had something that was their very own, yes. and I, those, the, like the watercolor pans that you were holding up, like the ones that you use a lot in elementary, they're great. But if I use it with six classes in a day for like a few days, it's, it's going to be shot or you could use, but if you, use it, if you give it just to cute little Chris Baki who's in your class and she's going to hold on to it, that's hers. You know, like it's yeah. funny how, and if you can afford, find ways to afford that people have some things that are just theirs. She would but, be a really good student, by the way. I just yeah, want you to know, like she would just like be the one that adored you guys, but I'm pretty sure that's ever, I'm pretty sure that's every student. So you have a YouTube channel. Have you ever YouTube, um, I don't even think that's a word, but have you ever videoed um, this process? No, I haven't. Um, I will admit that. Yeah. Somebody's asking, they want the video. <laughs> I'll make a video. I'll make a video about it. That can be on my, I got a 
I'm a, I'm a list lady. I need I, I know I, make, put it on the list, but I'll remind you too. Um, I want to remind everybody that um, we've got we've got about five more minutes, and we still have a couple things to talk about. But um, I want to remind everybody that um, there is a handout, and in the handout, there's actually um, even some pictures that go with it. <laughs> but it is if I can do it, all of you guys can do it because you're far smarter and greater than I am. Um, but yeah, my sister pulled out this Listerine thing and she's like, oh my gosh, Chrissy, these are so, these are so gross. Well, first, what do I do? I eat one. She just said they're gross. And what do I do? Eat one. And so I'm like, oh, not so bad. And then I'm like, oh. you know, it will for sure freshen your breath. Hardcore. Yeah. Um, but then I'm like, I need those. So I popped them all out. Mine are blue. It doesn't seem to bother it. I, um, I should have left two more in there. I could have gotten two more colors. Um, but it works and it, I'm digging it. And quite honestly, um, even if it's wet, I'm just trying this because just to see what happens on. And yeah, it, it, I mean, I got a little bit messy, but they're pretty thick. So they don't really bounce around. So if they don't dry before you go home from school, just tell the kids to take them home and maybe leave the top off and it'll dry overnight. So that's great. Yeah, As I got brush it. But it's the colors I didn't use are I can touch with my finger and nothing comes. Like, wow. And I you probably it. didn't squeeze as much as I did. <laughs> I, I am classic I, student. Shh. I but I am um, I I just I think travel watercolor kits, it's so nice. And just even if your kids aren't ready to even do like a simple landscape, there's one more lesson I wanted to tell you about. Um I put one a video to one of mine. It's one of my first videos I ever made during the beginning of our um, coronavirus vacation station teaching experience. So it's parts of it are kind of blurry, but it kind of shows how I use my watercolor kit. And um, but and we made an adaptation for our students. But Cassie Stevens has an amazing watercolor um, lesson. She uses liquid watercolors in it. And it focuses on the work of Generani, who's this great artist who um, does like all these like Mark, it's like a drawing on the bottom and the sky is watercolors, but you just yep. like draw mountains. And my kids loved it. We, my students would, would have, we did it in like two days. They would have done it for, I think they would have done it for a week or longer. They just, because it shows them how watercolors can give you great success. And there's so many great things out there. I want to make some more videos about it. But yeah, um, and I love that. And I love that you even threw out um, Cassie's name because <clears throat> Cassie has been somebody that has shared out thousands and thousands of things and people adapt and and now there's a whole Instagram of art teachers and YouTubes and stuff like that and the community that shares um, one of my signs back there says woven together because that's just how I look at um, art educators is that you are just all woven together you take ideas and build off of them and share them and do it so openly and um, we're, we're so close to being done. What else? Any other final comments? Um, no, thanks everybody for uh, tuning in. And uh, I really appreciate you guys coming out. I hope uh, that you gained something from this. And uh, all my in my information, my Heather Hagee Arts, my Instagram, amazing smart teachers. We call it smart because I work for Sebastian Middle School. So Sebastian Middle Art um, is- Awesome. Art and art is smart yes and um also smart teachers on youtube was already taken so we had to be amazing smart teachers for our <laughs> YouTube channel. and uh but uh i'd love to help if you want to reach out to me if you have any questions or if you have anything you want to share with me i'd love to hear it and uh i appreciate everybody for coming out today oh my gosh you are outstanding amazing and i am blessed to know you both um, personally and professionally. Thank you for all those tips. Maker Mondays back on Monday, which is the 15th, if I'm doing my math right. Leah Keller is gonna teach us beginning crochet, um, both using a crochet hook, um, but also using your finger. So um, bring a skein of yarn and um, you can learn how to do that as well. She will um, also talk a little bit about um, it just, it, it was a whole workshop that she was planning to do at NA, 
N-A-E-A, -E and I think it was called the Chronicles of Yarnia. Um, thank you so much. Um, after this, you will get a, a follow-up email with um, the video attached and a PD certificate attached as well. So um, all these videos, um, recorded webinars, I should call them, are housed on NASCO Educate. It's our K to Career Resource Center. If you don't um, have an account, you can request an account and you get it in about 24 days. So um, 33 seconds over time. So thank you guys for joining in. Um, be safe, um, be happy and keep teaching art.